We talk a lot here on the show about how cable news is influential, but it may not be as influential as a lot of people think, especially whenever it comes to Tucker Carlson. Let's put this up there on the screen. There's a lot being made, Crystal, about Tucker and his coverage. I'm not going to say it's not important, but if you actually look at this new Pew Research polling, what they find is that the Tucker Carlson view, especially on Ukraine amongst the GOP base and even on the broader U.S. population, hasn't had a whole lot of effect. And I think that one of the problems that people have is that they look at Trump's influence on the GOP base, and then they try and analogize that to Tucker or to anybody, really, Hannity on Fox News. It's just really not the same level of transferable power. And mm-hmm. I've watched this actually happen in the GOP primary, which is another useful test, which is that look at the candidates that Tucker most prefers, uh, J.D. Vance and Blake Masters, clearly who've been on his show. Neither are actually first place in the polls. J.D. appears to possibly be getting there, but was trailing behind despite being on tr- Tucker's program repeatedly. Masters, the polling is all over the map, but at one point, the guy was like in fourth place. Mm-hmm. And I just think it's an interesting, again, Trump's endorsement means a lot. It may not mean as much as it once did, but people try and look at them as exactly the same. And I just don't think that's the case whatsoever. And this pairs with, um, I just sent actually you last night, yeah. um, polling about which political media figures are most trusted by Republicans, yes. who's most trusted by Democrats, who's most trusted by the nation at large. First, you will not be surprised to learn that like, None of these figures has over 50% support among the broad public. But Tucker does rank as the most trusted media figure that they tested Mm -hmm. for Republicans. So it shows you, even with the person who has, you know, by the polling, the most sway with the Republican base, it ultimately only goes so far. And I also think it pushes back against the idea that this is just like a mindless mass of automatons who are just gonna do what their leadership tells them to do. And even though in some ways it contradicts the study that we showed earlier about how people who are religious Fox News viewers they can have their in opinions influence in their minds changed if they're like forced onto a CNN diet. Um, I think it pairs in this particular way, which is that both show that people are not just locked into one view and hardened in and it doesn't change and that's that. They are open to evaluating other evidence when it is presented to them. So you can see that you know, on the, actually put the element back up on the screen because I want to take a look at this graph again. What they ask here is um, whether or not you have confidence Vladimir Putin will do the right thing Mm -hmm. regarding world affairs. And you can, in fact, see when Trump is elected and you're like at the height of Russiagate and all of this stuff, and he's very friendly towards Putin, at least rhetorically, even though his policy was actually quite hawkish, you see that there's a high of somewhere around 37% of Republicans who have confidence in Putin, and it is divergent from the rest of the population. Well, now there's almost no partisan divide whatsoever. That support or confidence has completely fallen off a cliff. And those who are saying they have no confidence, you know, Democrats are at 94 and Republicans are at 92. So there's almost no difference. The only um, rhetorical difference is in these sort of very narrow corridors of um, elite Republican opinions, and clearly the base has has a mind of their own on these issues. So it is interesting to see. I think why it's important is that as Eastman as much as we talk about how much cable influences people, from my experience, most people who love Tucker and who watch Fox, their only uniting view is on the culture war. Whenever it comes to foreign policy and stuff, they're much more willing to depart and to have their own, uh, not necessarily have their own assumptions not challenged, but to maybe tune it out or not go as along. That's just purely from whenever I used to appear on Fox. Mm. I can tell you that the only thing that really gets ratings and that really works well is culture. And obviously that's, you know, that's 99% of what he does. But whenever it does come to foreign policy and more, as you can see from that uh, that graph, it doesn't necessarily have the impact that a lot of people has. And it doesn't politically translate in the way that a lot of people think. So it's good and it's bad, depending on your perspective, but I do think it challenges a lot of the way the mainstream media talks about it. Yeah, it's just good to have the information and understanding of how people process information because it matters a lot. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, guys, thanks for watching. More for you later. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. 
That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.